There are some moments on a coaster that are hard to prepare for. They take your breath away or they exert such great g-forces that it's hard to withstand them for more than a few seconds. I've ridden coasters all over the U.S. and I've determined that these are the 10 most intense elements in the country. Number 10. The first overbank on Millennium Forest at Cedar Point. After the insane 300 foot drop, you fly right into a 169 foot overbank turn at 122 degrees and even the most seasoned coaster enthusiasts will gray out. The speed, plus the forces pushing you into your seat at that overbanked angle, will send the blood rushing to your feet. For a ride that's often knocked for being forceless, this is one intense moment that can't be overlooked. Number 9. The Upward Helix on Titan at Six Flags Over Texas. The two Giovanola Hypers in the US, Goliath and Titan, are probably best known for their intense gray out helices. The final helix on both coasters has been neutered by the mid-course brake run, but Titan has something that Goliath doesn't, and that's an upward helix prior to that brake run. This is taken at full speed, and I found it way more intense than the final helix. Number eight. The back-to-back -back vertical loops on Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas. Schwarzkopf coasters are known for their circular, intense loops, and Shockwave throws you into two of these in a row following the 105-foot drop. It's enough speed to get through these loops while pulling 5.9 Gs and practically guaranteeing a gray out right as the ride is getting started. Number seven, the launch on Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. For a long time, this was the most intense launch in the United States especially after the demise of King's Dominion's hypersonic XLC and before Max Force opened at Six Flags Great America in 2019. I haven't ridden Max Force at the time this video is recorded, so I can't compare them, but they are very similar in stats. This Intamin hydraulic launch prototype led the way for height and speed record breakers, top fiddle dragster, and King to Ka, but the original holds up just fine. It's half the size of its successors, but the shorter the launch track means a faster acceleration and this thing fires you out of the station with a vengeance. Zero to 82 miles per hour in 2.3 seconds. You can ride this 100 times in a row and you will still feel that launch in your gut every time. Number six, the corkscrews on Batman the Ride at various Six Flags parks. B&M inverted coasters are one of the most intense models out there and there's nothing quite like a whippy inverted corkscrew. There are lots of rides that have this element, and I admit that when Raptor's mid-course brakes are off, its final corkscrews would be on this list. But for consistency's sake, I'm going to feature Batman the Ride because you will fly into those final corkscrews every single time. These manage to avoid headbanging, but still feel like the coaster is trying to rip your feet off. It's a great intense finale to an overall intense ride. Number 5. The Batwing on Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa. We're back with the B&M inverted model with the most intense element you'll find on them, the Batwing. Now there are other inverts other than Montu that feature this element, like Afterburn at Carowinds, or Banshee at Kings Island, which isn't exactly a Batwing, but it's a pretzel knot, it's basically the same element. But to me, Montu stands out as the most intense. After the zero G roll, you dive into this turnaround element that consists of two inversions, but the most intense part of this is the part between the two inversions. You have all the speed from diving down from the top of the first inversion, pushing your butt into your seat, and trying to pull your shoes off until you rise into the second inversion. With Montu, this takes place in a trench, so you have even more speed at the bottom of the Batwing, which makes it that much more intense. Number four, the inverted top hat on Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags Over Texas and Six Flags St. Louis. Inverted top hats are a rare breed these days, and it's too bad, because it doesn't get much more intense than this especially when taken backwards. After launching out of the station, you back into this insane element that stands 150 feet tall, find yourself looking straight down before being flipped upside down, and then diving back down the other side back first. For good measure, you do it all again going forward, which is also intense, but doesn't compare to going through it all backwards, where it provides intense positive g-forces, whip, and a stomach turning backwards fall. Number three. The final Raven turn on X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. The only fourth dimension coaster built by Aerodynamics has quite a history behind it and has left a giant footprint in coaster history. This coaster is not universally well received by coaster enthusiasts and one of the reasons is because of how some of the elements on this ride are very uncomfortable. 
Let me introduce you to the final Raven turn on X2. After exiting the Fly Delay, the train goes through the fire effect and up backwards into the last Raven turn, which is basically a half loop. This is an element that seems like it should put way too much force on the train and the track, but you have to really brace yourself for the intensity that's coming as you get dragged through the element and by the time you hit the bottom, you're facing forward and enter the final fly to lie and then the final breaks. The ride itself is intense enough, but that finale with the final raven turn is intense and not the smoothest element, which adds to the insanity that is X2. Number two, the pretzel loop on Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Most B&M flyers feature these inversions that look exactly like pretzels, but the one on Tatsu is just so much bigger than the ones you'll find on the Superman Ultimate Flight Clones and Manta at SeaWorld. You enter this element from the top and dive face first to the bottom and end up on your back before rising back up to the top and continue to fly through the rest of the course. Every time I've ridden this, especially in the back where you enter it at full speed, it feels like my face is trying to be ripped off. This easily could have been number one, but I will give credit where credit is due to the Intamin Giga on the other side of the country. Number 1. The first turn on Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Following a 300 foot drop, this Intamin Giga throws you directly into a drawn out turnaround that flings you back underneath the lift hill. It's more of a helix than a turnaround since by the time your vision comes back, you've turned about 270 degrees. This element is still the number one most intense moment in the country, but it used to be even more intense when it opened. Not long after opening, the park had to install temporary trim brakes on the first drop and then eventually reprofile that turn to lessen the g-force that was making people black out. I personally am not too upset that I didn't get to experience this in its full potential since it still gets me every time in its current state and it wraps up this list of intense elements. Let me know what you think of this list in the comments below and if your favorite intense moment in the US did not make this list. Also let me know what you think the most intense moments outside of America are. Also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you guys all next time.